The Football Show on Off The Ball with Paddy Power the greatest football partnership since Jeff and Heskey I'm prepared to end it I can well, do it then again. do it then what about your start to the game I was, it wasn't bad was it <laughs> why should it be an honest answer be a mistake how can a modern day manager not have a mobile phone why should he oh. Now then, welcome along. Football show underway. We have Dan McDonald back with us. We'll be joined presently by Kevin Caban. Jamie Moore is over at Tallis Stadium. Ireland 3, Ukraine 2. 75 minutes on the clock now, Jamie. Ireland hoping to see this one out at this stage. Yes, in front of a record crowd for women's game, international game in Ireland, Joe. The attendance just been confirmed of 5,238. That beats the previous record from their opening game of this campaign against Montenegro when there was 4,047 here. So around 1,200 more. They'd hope to have 8,000 here, but Obviously, a lot of the season ticket holders who've got the tickets haven't come, but there is still a very good crowd here. And Ireland retook the lead in the 52nd minute, having been tuning up and pep back to 2-2 just before the break. And we spoke, Joe, about Megan Campbell's long throw from wide areas into the box. But the goal came as a result of a long throw from in around the halfway line. She threw it over the top of Rihanna Jarrett, who's already scored and got an assist in the game. And her cross into the box found Denise O'Sullivan. Her shot was blocked on the line by a Montenegro defender, or by a, a Ukrainian defender, should I say, sorry. But unfortunately for them, it bounced off another defender, Natia Pasteleir, as she was running back towards her own goal and bounced into the net. So Ireland leading 3-2 here with around 13 minutes left. OK, cheers, Jamie. We'll check back in with you at full time. 77 minutes on the clock now, Dan. Again, for people just tuning in, Katie McKay with the opening goal. It was a really good opening goal, by the way. Definitely the best move of that opening 25 minutes. Rihanna Jarrett, who has led the line very well, worked incredibly hard, took advantage of a bad goalkeeping error from a corner. She really just had to stoop to head a ball in at the back post. And then Ukraine hit back. Not good for Marie Oren in no. the Irish goals. Horrendous. Horrendous, yeah. Yeah, really bad. Uh, just a, it was a nothing cross, no pace on it, head height, no pressure on her, and just completely fumbled it. And it was a tap in for Ukraine. And then there was a Megan Connolly miscue in the area at 2 1, which again, you could argue Horan should have saved the resulting shot. But either way, between Connolly and Horan, it was another bad goal to give away. So it was 2 2 at the break. And about 10 minutes into the second half, Denise O'Sullivan, who certainly looks maybe like the most technically gifted or one of the technically yeah, superior players America, out there. Yeah, yeah. she good. followed up on good work from Jarrett. Again, mix up in the Ukraine box, probably technically an own goal, but Denise O'Sullivan had a big hand in it. So that's where we are, 3-2 and yeah. a record it's, attendance. It's a bit, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, obviously it's not a full house as was trumpeted and um, what, 5,000, 3 to 8, 3 to 8 was just and like, um, yeah, it's a lot of, lot of empty seats. It was 3,000 short, I'm always saying. Yeah, yeah. Because Eddie Russell's texted in to say, what's going on with the FAI? I would have gone with my wife to see Ireland tonight only for information over the last few days saying that the game was sold out. I'm at home watching. There are hundreds of free seats available. Yeah, yeah, a lot of free seats available. I'm not seeing this side of it where the camera is. Even 5,000 seems, you know, seems like a high number. But Do you want to explain did, did, Well, yeah, the there was an option. There was a, Basically, season ticket holders were given the option to, to take tickets, I think. But it we had a tweet in earlier, I think, from... Uh, was it Owen Allen maybe suggesting they were given the option until September 30th to take tickets? Um, I think it was by by email. Uh, I'm just going to get it up here. Season ticket holders were given the option of downloading complimentary tickets prior to the 30th of September for both games. So there was this match and the under-21s on Thursday night as well. Again, Trump had us sold out. Um, completely optional, but many people have done so just to cover themselves. This was Owen's opinion, uh, but with little intention to attend. So just to uh, interrupt. Do we know? Do people have to pay extra to do that? Oh, I don't. I don't know. Complimentary tickets. So no, I think it was a it was a park for season ticket holders to get to go to these games. They may have to change that system because clearly a lot of people said, "Well, this is a shot to nothing. I can just tick this email box. I get my free ticket for the game, and if I decide not to go on the night, well, I don't lose anything." Yeah, and I think just probably because there's so much positivity and there's a real drive and determination and push behind the 2020 campaign yeah. that it was seized upon. Sold out game, this is brilliant, this is fantastic. Um, and I think that was probably the priority. Um, and that was, you know, everyone was really willing to get behind that yeah. rather than necessarily thinking, well, is this system actually going to mean the stadium is full? And Jamie did mention earlier that, that this obviously was sensed by some people in the FAI that they had to contact ring and, and contact people say, well, actually, are you planning to go? Yeah. Um, because uh, the, the, the weird optics now, and you mentioned that text of people, people who wanted to go have basically been turned away from this match. Um, or didn't bother trying to get tickets. Yeah, or well, they weren't given the option. That, like, there's always a walk-up on the day, and I think there will have been coverage around this match. And um, it, just, it just, obviously, there's, there's, I understand the desire to make the stadium full, and, and by getting on to all your season ticket holders is a huge, is a huge market. And you hope that people who've never gone before 
will go again. And so you have to do something like this to drive numbers. I get that. I don't think it would be unfair to just to hammer people on this basis. Um, but at the, you know, there's people who could have gone uh, who aren't there because people who are sort of casual about it sort of said, I might, I may not. Um, well, it's I, a big win for them, though, potentially. I mean, that is the one thing. I know there's uh, 10 minutes to go. It must be said, like, the Women's World Cup in the summer, watched it qu- quite a bit of it. Um, and I, 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 was, I thought it was decent. And, you know, I think part of the, part of the journey here is to, like, to be able to critically assess the games and, and comment on them. And, like, this matches for a key game, like, some of the, the, the quality of someone defending and goalkeeping has been pretty poor. To be honest, you know it's been it's been pretty average, um, but, but like there is obviously a, a big issue in terms of the Gulf. I mean, Ukraine are second seeds; they've lost eight nil to Germany twice. Yeah. Like there's a big gulf between the have and the have nots. I think at the top of the women's game, and it's a big gap to bridge. And like you know, this game has had some entertaining forward play, but some of the other play it must be said has been has been pretty poor. You know, so it's. Um, that's reflective of the journey that has to be travelled as well too that there's some really good teams at the top end of the game and Ireland are trying to get to that tournament and that's how like that's how you improve you can't just tune in and expect them to be the real deal straight away um, but like you know this game has been a real mixed bag I think, Very to, I think to be honest, you have to you have to call it and and, and say it as such. It has been a real mixed bag. Oh, no, some of the mistakes Error have been strewn, you some, know? Of the, some of the mistakes um, have been. But that can be a difficult stadium to play in sometimes with the conditions. I'm not sure if the wind is a factor. Yeah. But but still, um, it's been it's been poor. Very poor. You're not. You're, I mean, you're not out on your own. There, some really terrible mistakes at times. Just on the ticket thing to round that off, the general public will let you down, and they have here. Like so, the guts of you can say three thousand people have ticked the old. I'll go along box yeah. and then just not showed up. Now, a percentage of them will have very legitimate reasons, so it's not like every. Tala can be hard to get to. This is a slight problem with Tala, and people might be there this evening, half six or oh, half seven kick off, the Lewis or oh, the traffic, and then, like, this could be, th- this isn't like a, a, a women's football thing, because the 21s on Thursday could have the same issue. People might say, oh, Aaron Connolly's not in the squad, I might just, I might just not go now. Yes, that's what I would class as not a legitimate excuse. Mm. If it's I'm not arse going because the traffic's bad and it's hard to get to, well, you've had a few days' notice to but get there. That's clearly what's, what, what would have happened. Maybe. I mean, I, it's I, a lot of people. It's a couple oh, of thousand people, I, Joe. It's not. I think a few, I think a percentage of them said, "Hang on, there's no extra cost here. Okay, I can tick the box." And then if it doesn't suit me absolutely perfectly on the day, if work doesn't go all to plan, then I just don't go, and that's fine. So I think going forward, the FAR are within the rights to say, "Season ticket holders, we value you, we love you." But you did tick this box, and then we can see from the old uh, scanner machine that you didn't show up on the night. Mm. So in future, the next Irish Women's International, if you want to reserve one of those tickets, you're absolutely allowed to do so. It's going to cost you tenner, or it's going to cost you 15 There should be a booking fee or something Something. with it. Yeah, and uh, nobody can complain then if they say, well, hang on, why am I paying a fiver or a tenner? Well, the answer is you got the last one for free, and you didn't show up. So we reserve the right to say, and it's just changing some, some small print in their deal. I mean, if they continue to show up and it's a perk that you get it for free, absolutely no problem. That's great. Yeah. But you can't have people saying, well, penance free, I'm just going to take a ticket, not let somebody else get that ticket, not show up because it just didn't suit me on the day. Because I guarantee you they would have shown up at the Aviva Stadium for a crunch game between the men's team against the second seeds in a group. Oh, no, absolutely. So that's absolutely. the reality. They, they kind of treated the ticket with a sense of disdain is a too strong a word, but a certain casual, well, I'll take it, well, tough luck. Yeah. And if you give it to people for free on those terms, if, you, if that's how you pitch it to the market, then the market's going to respond that way. Yeah, it, 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 it's a, it is a balancing act because is, you want yeah. to get people to support the team. Uh, but again, you know, there comes a point where like, you, you want realistic coverage of where things are at. Like, a record attendance is great, but the real progress is a record attendance of people who paid into the match out of demand and I think there is a certain level of interest now mm. that there's a sense of you know there is a, there's always a cosmetic element and I'm a big fan of like you know yeah for these games I don't know the FEI Cup final is coming up and I'd be a big supporter of yeah get kids teams and you know throw out, around tickets and stuff so there's a balance in act but between that and saying well there's a 5,000 people a record crowd like you know when when 5,000 people are paying in to the match you know as a as a priority event for them mm. that is the next step along so there comes a point where in the next campaign maybe that this service just isn't offered at all mm. you know that this isn't there it's like you know your first refusal on tickets but you have to pay for them yeah. you know and and that has to be the the real barometer of progress and um, there's you know there's there's a, there's a balance between positivity and promoting it and also 
portraying it as it is. And, um, you know, you would hope, like, there's a big game coming up against Germany in this group, which is going to be uh, of a massive attraction. And that shouldn't need to go to uh, season ticket holders. That should actually be, let's see how many tickets you can sell. And then if it gets close to it and the ticket take up is whatever it might be, then you might look at kids or various ways of, of trying to fill the place. Or you can email all your season ticket holders then and say first come first serve. Yeah, or a discount yeah. price or whatever it might be, but that, that probably needs to be the strategy that's applied. Yeah, after tonight I think that's fair. Uh, it's worth trying for tonight, but the public will let you down sometimes. Yeah, and can't, I just don't hope it's not all, well, this is the record crowd, this is the story. I mean, like you have to aspire to more than that when there's a lot of promotional aspect to that. You know? 3-2 with five, six minutes to go. It will be a very good win for Ireland, especially after throwing away a two-goal lead, that's for sure. On the men's team, Conor Harran was out in front of the media today, amongst others. You were there, so just a quick snippet of what he was talking about. Naturally, I presume this is the rule of the week that anyone who's put forward to the media has to be asked about Aaron Connolly. That's just it's the, Aaron uh, Connolly week. It's the first it's question. Just Aaron Connolly week. Have you got an Aaron Connolly story to tell? Mm. So he was asked about what it was like to play against Aaron Connolly because Aston Villa obviously faced Brighton. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, here was Conor Harran. Yeah, fantastic for him. It's always uh, great for for the Irish setup when there's when there's lads doing well. Um, you know, I played against him a couple of weeks before that in, in the cup against against Brighton, and um, he played sixty minutes in that game, and he gave our two set and a halves. Um, you know, a tough tough night. So you know, when um, when he was banging in a few goals at the weekend, that was no surprise to me. He's got you know that energy and that work ethic to to give set and a halves a tough tough day at the office, and uh, you know he did that on Saturday against Spurs. So I was delighted to see it. We'll uh, talk Aaron Connolly to Kev a little bit. We won't, again, rehash It was great at the weekend. Um, it, Sorry. Uh, we won't rehash last night's show again by talking too much about Connolly between ourselves. But Harren was then, as you might have heard the start of it there, he was um, in good form himself for Villa against Norwich. He scored one, he set one up, so he was asked about that. The weekend, um, it kind of shows that hard work does pay off with them kind of moments, but, um, yeah, one that I won't be resting on. Like I said, I'm, I'm always never I'm never satisfied with my game. I'm, I'm always my worst critic. Um working on my game again this week to try and improve and yeah it, it'd, be, it'd be something maybe later on in my career or when I'm finished that I look back on with great pride but it's not time to look back at it now it's time to you know kick on again yeah is there anything that you've identified in your few games in this qualifying campaign that you can improve on and want to improve on um I probably want to score a couple more goals um if I'm being honest I've I've, I've had 14 caps now I've scored one and um, it's great to get my first goal of course an important goal as well but I've always managed to score goals over the years so um, a couple of more goals, um, you know, maybe hopefully in the next five or six games or whatever it is, um, hopefully I'll, I'll, I might nick one or two. In fairness to him, the goal he did score was a doozy. It rained tennis balls. What a moment. Yeah. I suppose he wants to score one from play. That's the next thing, because he can be so effective in general play, not just a dead ball, you know, sharp shooter as such, you know. You got an insight there into his mentality, his own worst critic. He's asked about a very good moment in the Premier League for Aston Villa, and he's saying things like, well, I'm not going to rest on my laurels. This guy's really fought through and made it now, hasn't he? Yeah, like he's 28, you know, and, and he still feels like a newbie, you know, in terms of international football. And in fact, that was his first Premier League goal at the weekend. It's his first Premier League season. I don't know if you saw the story about him recently. Um, he replied to a tweet from 2014. Did you see this? Yeah. Like when he was at Plymouth, that some somebody doubted him. And he said at the time, you know, it was something about aspiring to the Premier League. And uh, someone said, listen, you're a good player, but, you know, get real. And he said, can I not dream? Yeah. And he obviously stored that tweet away for the guts of like five, five and a half years. I think it was January 2014. And, you know, five and a half years later, he was able to produce it. But the, the interesting thing was, like, he played the first game of the season against Spurs and then, and then got dropped. And, like, he has this big Premier League summer going, here I am, Premier League player. I'm sure he has that sort of sense of desire and anticipation to, to push home. And then after one game, he's, he's, he's out of the picture. And he had to play in those League Cup games. I was there that game against Brighton. I mentioned that last night. Carroll was excellent um, in a very advanced role and scored and made a goal. <clears throat> and he's been a victim sometimes at Villa that they've got McGinn and Grealish, very attacking midfielders. And he's had to play a more with, with drawn role at Villa at times when actually he's someone that's pretty effective high up the pitch. And he's had to be patient. Yeah. Um, but he, he's responded well to being dropped. And, and I mean, at the weekend, he, as you mentioned, like he was a key player at Norwich. He's technically very good, which is always welcome. That, uh, that tweet you mentioned, so in January 2014, he'd clearly done an interview in the local paper and somewhere along the way, he had said, yeah, the dream is to play in the Premier League. So Craig Taylor on Twitter said, good article, mate. You're Argyle's best player, kid. No danger. But the Premier League, there's ambitions and there's reality. <laughs> 
And Conor Horan replied in 2014 to say, something to work on every day, can I not dream? Question mark. Craig responded, of course, Kitta. I think you're a decent player and I rate you. I'm just being honest. <laughs> and even Craig ventured to say as well, I have limitations in my work too. He's a more, it does, like, you wouldn't even call that like trolling. That's, that's actually more reasonable. <laughs> like it was, it was a bit of grief, but it was, it was at the sort of benign end of the scale. If anything, it's worse, it's so reasoned. This is the thing, it's like, I have limitations, you I, have limitations. I support your club. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm a supporter of yours. It's just, I don't, I don't think you're going to make Congress. You know, you should stay at a lower level of local politics, you Craig, know? Craig's saying, I'm not going to be the best accountant in the world. You're not going to be in the Premier League. It's just, yeah. So Harahan, just the four and a half years later. Five and a half. Correct, five and a half. Time I'm, is flying by, John. Not the best accountant in the world. Yeah. Uh, hi, Craig. Remember this tweet back in 2014? I always remember it to this day. Wow. And then, ironically, because I was confused by this, because Craig's avatar on Twitter is an Aston Villa crest. He says, ironically, you're a Villa fan. <laughs> <laughs> Never tell anyone they can't achieve something. Thumbs up. 46,000.4 likes, 7,000 retweets, and a lot of people saying. I'm not sure that Craig ever replied. This was the other thing as well. <laughs> like, <laughs> I hope Craig hasn't muted him or something. He's, he's missed this whole exchange. Maybe Craig has gone on to bigger things than he expected he in his career, <laughs> and he needs enough time Craig's to be an offshore banker now. Um, yeah, I, I, but it does say something about his personality, I guess, that he, he started away. Like I, A couple of times I've spoken yeah. to her and after, he can be pretty intense after a game. Like He's... Um, like he, he's proved a lot of people wrong. I know it's a very cliche thing, but he has. Um, like he's he has he's come up the hard way. Like some like the, the profile of a lot of Irish internationals in recent years has has been to come that route. These Cork lads, they got something about them. They have though. Yeah, yeah, and there's a real Cork personality in the Irish team now. Like John Egan was was speaking yesterday about how he played hurling against Aaron when they were younger. Uh, I think Egan was Bishopstown and Aaron was Bandon, mm. and they both went to Sunderland. They both didn't make it at Sunderland. They both went down the leagues. They both made their Premier League debut on the same day for different clubs. And now they could both play for Ireland in a competitive qualifier on Saturday. They, 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 they will. And uh, there's Kevin Long, there's Alan Brown as well. But uh, Karen in particular, I, you can imagine that he stored up a lot of the, mm. the... I'm sure anyone who's released him along the way is probably on a list of some kind, you know? And... Uh, I'm sure he, like, he carries that with him as, as a sort of a, as a confidence booster that he, he, he's, he's silenced various people along the way, including Craig and whoever else mm. agreed with Craig at that point in time. I don't think it'd be the mm. worst idea in the world to track Craig down and ask him if he wants to come on the show. You should make it happen. Yeah. What are your limitations? Well, maybe you didn't believe in yourself, Craig, the way Connor did. Yeah, maybe you should have more belief in By the way, I, league football. I retract my, oh, there's something about Cork people, that's just garbage. Yeah, I mean, why, did, why did you say that? It's just, just, a t- it's, just the gallery. it's just the kind of silly, tempting thing that people say in the media with no real evidence. It's just a, a kind of whimsical, oh, there's Roy Keane, there's this guy. It's nonsense. It's a Cork thing. I mean, I, it is also, I suppose, you can look would, at the... I would think it's a professional it's sport a, thing. It's the second biggest city, so it's, I mean, yeah. by population, it's going to have a, a good chance. But it is true, there is a lot of... Uh, there is a Cork... Core to the team that wasn't always there. Mm. Like to be fair, I, I was getting at the uh, feisty, oh, the feisty wrong. nature, the Roy Keane, the Ronan O'Gara, the bit of oomph, bit of needle in there. Well, there possibly is something else. Ah, there's not. It's just a, a, it's a subsection of any society. Sonny O'Sullivan's not like that. Dennis Irwin's not like that. It's a professional sport thing. Yeah, there's going to be those types. And I think the Irish dressing room has a lot of them. School yeah. of hard knocks. I think there is. Yeah, I think, I think they've all. Um, this is why that's why there's a novelty about the young lads coming through straight from Premier League clubs yeah. and academies that uh, a lot of the others in the group could relate to rejection as a thing. I mean, Enda Stevens again down the leagues back up. You know, you can go through the team, even yeah. the likes of McGoldrick and players before, like think of Walters and people like that. You know, the players have played in all four leagues that have played for Ireland. I mean, that was one of the things Conor Harrington scored in all four divisions and said, you know, that was an honour. And uh, Kevin Cleban is coming up soon and said he wasn't the only one because he's, he's done that too. The ego and Kev, just let the tweet go. Yeah, all four leagues play, uh, scored for Ireland. Yeah. Anything else you want to mention about Ireland camp today? We're going to take a short break and then we'll be back with Kev in a second. Uh, yeah. Anything else of note? James well, McLean? Not especially. McLean um, had a stiff back. He didn't play for Stoke at the weekend and he was doing a bit of training away from the group. There doesn't have any sense of urgency about it, but we should find out more tomorrow. Okay. And also Duffy and McGoldrick to find out are they really going to travel to Tbilisi on Thursday or not. I have this niggling suspicion it's more likely that, that it's Switzerland, if anything, 
But uh, you never know. I mean, they probably will, will only be doing proper work at their clubs today, so 24 hours can maybe change a lot. Yeah, OK. Short outbreak, it's 3-2 uh, Ireland. They're still playing at the Tallis Stadium. It's about to go full-time, and then we're back in uh, just a sec with Kev Kilban as well. Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power The greatest football partnership since Jeff and Heskey are you looking for a new used car? Look no further. At carnext.com, we select only high quality used cars, younger than five years old, selected and perfected. So you can enjoy any car, anytime, anywhere at carnext.com. Fly with Cathay Pacific from Dublin Airport to over 70 destinations across Asia and Australia and move beyond the familiar. State-of-the-art cabins, world-class entertainment and award-winning service, making sure you arrive ready to make the most of whatever lies ahead. Whether it's the stunning coastline of Sydney, the secluded waterfalls of Bali, or the bustling markets of Ho Chi Minh City, book now at CathayPacific.com. Cathay Pacific. Move beyond. The United Kingdom is due to leave the European Union on the 31st of October. Brexit will mean changes for people living in Ireland, so it's important that you understand what these changes will mean for you. Many things will remain the same, but some of the changes may have a bigger impact on your daily life than others. It's important that you make sure you are as prepared as possible. Find out what you need to know at gov.ie forward slash Brexit, an initiative of the Government of Ireland. Ah, uh, today, 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 today. If you've had enough todaying for today, then chances are today is probably not your cup of tea. But that's okay, because I'm a cup of coffee. Not just any coffee, Apple Green's best coffee on the road. Crafted by our highly trained, brilliant baristas who will make sure you get the finest cup of full, skinny, single, double deliciousness. <sighs> ah, today. At least you're not yesterday. Apple Green Coffee. Every day, it's good to go. You know what they say, good things come to those who wait. But three to five working days, lads, that's pushing it now. If I'm down in Arklow or Mullingar trying to order a new washing machine, I want it from someone with the largest next day delivery and installation area in Ireland. And that's appliancesdelivered.ie. Whether you want a dishwasher in Dublin, a new oven in Nace, or a tumble dryer in Tullamore, Appliances Delivered has you covered. Plus, we're the highest rated electrical retailer in Ireland, with a juicy 9.7 on Trust Pilot as voted for a buy yourselves. Get next day delivery and installation now at appliancesdelivered.ie. Have a great evening with itsforwomen.ie. Don't live your life on hold. Get a quote now at itsforwomen.ie and see why we're trusted by over 130,000 women in Ireland. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. Welcome back. So Ireland have beaten Ukraine three goals to two. It's gone full time. As things stand in the table, Ireland in second on six points. Germany are on 12 points with uh, four games played. They are flying. Nobody else in the group has any points, although Ukraine have played Germany twice, which slants things slightly. Germany are well clear in this group. Ireland's next game will be away to Greece on the 12th of November. But Jamie Moore, a 3-2 win against the second seeds Ukraine tonight. That's a big win for them. Yes, it does indeed. I'll say rock, rock, rock around the world. The players and staff doing a lap of honour around Tala Stadium, Joe. On a record-breaking night, a crowd of 5,328 have turned up here. A new record attendance for women's international match at Tala Stadium. And it's finished 3-2. The girls of Green have made it two wins from two. And a win in a first match for Vera Pau, the new manager as well. The girls in Green went 2-0 up through goals from captain Katie McCabe after Rihanna Jarrett's cross. And then Jarrett herself with a close-range header from McCabe's corner. They came in the 25th and 28th minutes. Then disaster for Ireland goalkeeper Maria Hurahan. She dropped a simple cross from a wide free kick and the Ukraine's Liebov Schmatt funded in to make it 2-1. Ireland's main rivals for second spot in this group then equalised three minutes before the break after another Irish mistake. A clearance went straight to Ola Olajuk and she scored into the bottom corner despite the best efforts of Hurahan. And then the winner, Joe, which came seven minutes after half-time. Megan Campbell's unbelievable long throw sent the player of the match, Rihanna Jarrett, racing towards goal. Her cross found Denise O'Sullivan, whose shot was blocked on the line, but a whacked off Ukraine defender, Natia Pachelar, and she was on the back towards her own goal, and a bounced in to give Ireland the three points. And Marie Hurran 
Had I made that mistake earlier, it made a very, very good save in the last minute. It leaves them second in the group, Joe, as you mentioned. They've won two from two and proved to be six ahead of Ukraine already, but one less game played. Next up is that trip to Greece. And we do remember Ireland played the group leaders, Germany, in two of their last three matches. So they're really going to try and get points on the board in this early stage. And what we love, Joe, is loads of the crowd have hung around and the Irish players in the crowd now taking selfies, signing autographs, taking photos. A really nice moment here in front of a record crowd and a great night for Ireland. Come on, Jamie. Thanks very much. Jamie Moore there at the Tallis Stadium. It is a nice touch, actually. It happened the last game as well. They've time to go and meet all the fans. That's important. A lot of very excited kids there. Yeah. There's a good vibe. That's what, like, yeah. that's that's the whole... It's a selling point, really. That, that is a selling point, because it, it is a generational attempt, and, like, there possibly really is a generation that will never get into the habit of going regularly. It's the next one down that matters, and, and this has to become their normality. So that is that is the purpose of, I guess, a lot of what this campaign is built towards. Exciting news. Kevin Colban standing by. Hello. Hi, Joe. How are you keeping? Very well. How are you? Well, good, yeah, not bad at all. Just you know, just getting on with things, plodding on. Listen, that's you all over. There's loads to talk about. There's loads to talk about. Needless yeah. to say, we'll be checking in on how you're doing. But first, uh, there's Aaron Connolly. There's Everton. A few people want us to ask you about Everton, what's going on there. The Connolly thing is good, yeah. though, isn't it? Let's talk about Connolly for a second. Oh, this, is, this is the real it's, deal. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's fabulous. I heard, I heard Dan, uh, I think he was talking on OTBM on Monday, saying... Uh, it was last week, sorry, it was just after the squad was announced and he was saying that probably Connolly deserved to be in the squad on merit for what he's done this season, the amount of game time he's had for Brighton. So I think what he did at the weekend just put it in everybody's mind that we were all feeling the same, actually. He, he maybe should have been in, but Mick was loyal to the players that was in and around the squad. And I, I just think we, we, we don't have a buzz around too many Irish players, do we? We don't have that feeling where our, our lads step up and score two Premier League goals in a game on your, on your full Premier League debut. So... Yeah, it, it's something to get excited about, definitely. Like Kev, there is a great buzz about him, and I think there's a there's, there's there's a desire for him to play. Like people just want to see him play. It's not just the Johnny Wards of this world, but you know, a lot of people just want want Aaron Connolly to be involved in the game. But where do you yeah. actually play him? You know, from your perspective, because <clears throat> yeah, there's been a you know James McLean has played regularly. There's a debate over whether McLean plays at full back. It, it seems like Matt Doherty might be to the forefront of the left back debate. So. So where does Connolly fit in if you if you are yeah, going mean, to get him into the side? Yeah, I mean that's not Galway's Johnny Ward, is it? Calling for another uh, Galwegian to get into the squad, is it? No, but anyway, that that's for that's for another another day, isn't it? Uh, well, you know, I, I think it's a bit a, a big ask, Dan, and you would have seen enough of, of the team. Obviously, it's a big ask to say, I tell you what, you're going to go and be our number nine, playing the way that that we probably play, trying to get him into the game. Often, it's always I would always feel it's an easier option for a manager to play them to play. In a while, or play new players or new um, new uh, new people that have been introduced into the squad in a wider area because there is that little bit of support and a bit of help. If you're playing through the middle as a number nine, there's a lot of responsibility. There's been a lot of responsibility on on David McGoldrick when the way that we've played, get hold of the ball, take four and five touches with your back to play. I personally think that's a big ask. If we're going over to Georgia and we're asking to be a number nine. I'd, 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 my preference would be to play him in, uh, in off the wider areas. Certainly, if he's not going to start him, Mick, I'd definitely be thinking, look, he's got to be what, the, the first or the second option off the bench. And if we are struggling, then we need a goal. He's got to be that, that option. So there are a number of positions that you, you've seen enough of him yourself, Dan. You know that he, he's not just restricted to playing as a number nine. But I think it does give us hope that we've got a player of his type that we know, that Mick would know now, with him playing or done what he's done at a Premier League level, I could go and put him through the middle. It just might be these two big, these two, these two are huge games. I think we know that. And that's that's the problem I think that we've got right now, that these two big games have maybe come at the wrong time for him in terms of, I would have loved to have had him in the squad last month for that, mm. uh, for that Bulgaria game. But mm. he's in the squad now and he's in on merit for what he's achieved this season. And in so much as you can read into anything, the body language in all the newspapers today, all the photos from training yesterday is really nice. Like it's Mick sort of smiling yeah. and joking with him and you know that Mick will create a very hospitable environment and Connolly will be welcomed with open arms. And he was high-fiving his under-21 teammates who were kind of almost peering in over the gates at him. So <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing for him. If um, McGoldrick doesn't make it, who does lead the line? Well, I, I think you, well, there's probably a number of options that's, that's really in there for him, isn't there? There's, of course, Callum Robinson, who, who played there, who, who could play there as well. Uh, Sean Maguire, of course, would be another. Would I want to throw him straight into that game, that big game, and go, mm. yes, on you? I don't know, Joe. There, there would be probably a reluctance within me. I'm, and it's nothing to do with age. It's nothing to do with anything else. It's just 
I think that that is a hugely pressurised game. Two games for him to be thrown in as a number nine. Uh, probably, I think the preference even for Mick would be to try to get him onto the bench, have him within the 18 and get him off the bench <laughs> at some stage if he can. That, that would be my preference, I'd, I'd feel. But if McGoldrick's out, then he's got to be pushing simply for what he's done this weekend. Yeah, look, I, I, you would get the sense, Kev, that maybe James Collins is a contender. I mean, look, we know, yeah, that, like, yeah. you, you know that uh, it's not the stereotype, Mick, because it's not fair. Because at, at, you know, at various times he played Damien Duff through the middle, and uh, like he's he. But but you do feel that for the type of game that it might be for Georgia and Switzerland, that Mick, if he if he doesn't have McGoldrick, he's going to want that number nine, that, that a bit more of a presence. You would have thought that Collins yeah. might tick the boxes. Possibly, but the, the, the way that we always think of Mick, of Mick McCarthy's teams having a big number nine, getting <clears throat> having a big striker that's going to be able to play, as I was saying before, these back to goal. But in fairness to Mick, he took a chance on someone like Robbie. And I know that Robbie was progressing, but Robbie wouldn't have been the sort of player that would have, Robbie Keane, that is, that, yeah. that would have been a stereotypical Mick McCarthy player. He was a player that liked to play on the shoulder defenders, that liked to drop deep, that liked to float into wider areas, that almost was... You couldn't restrict him to the to the position that he was taking up. So, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't label or, or, or pigeonhole Mick McCarthy to say, well, that is his type of play. Yes, yeah. McGoldrick would be the play that you that you'd associate with him. Daryl Murphy for the times that he would have had him at Sunderland and, and, and Ipswich as well. But I think Mick Mick is the sort of manager that if if someone's playing well and they're going mm. well in training and you impress him. He'll throw you in, well, you and, know, and, 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 and I think that could be the case. Uh, the, the two things that would jump out at you about Connolly early on are: does he have the technical ability to play a hold-up role if needs be? If it's explained to him, I need you to get on the ball, take a few touches, and bring a midfielder into it. Clearly, he does. Does he have the intelligence yeah. to do that? Uh, clearly, he does. You could just see it in his movement at the weekend that he does have uh, smarts about him. What I might come down to is his personality. Like it was funny, Dan was saying that Mick even referenced your debut against Iceland today just to say. Look how brilliant a career Kev had, and yet debuts are tricky. They're new. They're st- yeah. they're tough. So I guess the unknowable here, from our point of view, is Connolly's personality, his mm. demeanour around the place. Because like Robbie had the swagger and was like, "Get yeah. out of the way, old man. Let me in." And we don't know where Connolly is in that spectrum. Yeah, I mean, I I, I mean, I spoke to you in reference to myself about my debut, and I. I, I I genuinely put too much pressure on myself. I built it up to be something it probably wasn't, and. Again, Dan would have seen a lot of him. Dan's probably spoke to him post-match after games and, and even pre-match. Dan would have spoken to him. And it, the sense that I get from him, even watching him at the weekend, that the, the doesn't seem uh, to, he, he doesn't seem to have that fear within him. He doesn't seem to be the sort of player that's, that would be intimidated about going out to play mm. the weekend. But it, it's OK if you go out and you play and you can play with that freedom. But how are we going to get him into the game if we go over to Georgia and Georgia dominate the ball because he did it against Denmark as well in their last game they dominated so how, how are we going to get him into the game then mm. he's coming off the pitch trudging off the pitch and he has been a bit isolated he's not necessarily got himself into the game a lot that 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 takes discipline for a younger lad uh, you know watching him play for, for Brighton this season and seeing how they're playing and progressing he, he he's not restricted to a number nine if you watch him and in fairness the back back three or uh, back four, however they've played midfield, there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of movement within the side. I don't necess- We won't play like that. So that's the thing with him. Yeah. Are you going to say to him, you, you've got a freer role? I, I don't think Mick can afford to do that because I think there's too much at stake for these two games. Mm. He's definitely got personality, Kev. There's no doubt about that from everything you hear about him. But I'm just curious, like you, you would have seen a lot of players come into the squad during your time. Like, What are the other players looking for? From him this week, like what are they thinking? Because they, they, you know, they'll have heard a bit, and I'm sure there's probably a few of the older yeah. fellas are like, "What's the, all this hype about this 21s team?" It would be, probably be a natural sentiment to feel. Uh, like, what are they looking for? Yeah, I'd, well, I'd probably say they're not looking for anything, but I think they're probably waiting. Almost right. Come on, then show me what you've got. Let's see it, and then, and then if if it's not quite there on the first day, there's probably a few little whispers getting onto the bus. It's not the best of days, that lad today, has he? It, it, that's that's what generally does happen. I hope he's gone in and played with that swagger that you spoke about there um, in training today and he's or in the last couple of days, and he's just gone out and tried to express himself. I, I don't imagine it'd be any different with him. I can't see it being yeah. any different. I think, that, I think the way that Mick Taylor's training... It, he would enjoy the type of train that Mick would put on for him. So I think he could he could express himself. You'd be fizzing the ball at him 90 miles an hour in the first few minutes of the little five-a-side, wouldn't you? 
No, you're not, Joe. Well, you, you, now you just well, I, I'd say something. Well, you are. You're being a dick now, so I wouldn't do that. You know, would <laughs> players would do that though, wouldn't they? They'd no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. To him, and you know, I wouldn't do that to him. Let, let, let's get on to the interesting situation, which is your dancing on ice career. <laughs> yeah, is that is that the only that's the only thing you want to talk about, Joe? Let's be honest. It's on Instagram if you want to follow it closely. Are you being paid by the Instagram? How does this work? <laughs> no, I've not. I've not I, 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 Joe, I've, I, I'm being serious now. I I couldn't get out of bed on on Sunday. It was mm. I, I've missed I've missed three days on the ice because I, I literally couldn't get out of bed uh, on Sunday. Seriously struggling. Uh, Your back. Been, my back. I fell on I fell on my back last week. I think I'd said that to you. And it's been it's been quite painful. So, but I'm I, I've been told by a few people that I'm a soft soccer player that's what that's what i'm according to some people yeah so how many sessions on the ice have you done at this stage kev uh four i've done four yeah so i i'll get i'll get another three this week um and then i'll be back over to dublin for a few days and then i'll be back on the ice again next week so it, 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 i'm not behind schedule or anything because yeah. I, I tried to get a couple in last week as it was but it's just um it, it, it's i tell you what it, it, it's very sobering realizing how bad I am and I'm trying to get better and better and it's just not happening. Because you should have more coordination clearly than a lot of the contestants there. You know, there'll be some of them who just will have no sporting ability whatsoever. It doesn't matter. So, no, it's, 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 it's different having I mean, sporting ability and walking or and walking or trying to skate on ice. But you've got uh, coordination. Yeah, I probably do. I'll have a, a little bit of coordination, but it's it's very different. I, I, I honestly it, it's um at the moment at the moment, um, me, me hope is is dwindling away. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. well, he's, I, got to, he's got to work yeah. in tandem with his partner, not overlap them and go on their outside. Like would be his natural move. Yeah, no, Dan, no overlaps. Yeah, I'm just with a trainer. I'm just I'm being I'm literally being coached the basics at the moment. I'm I'm with a trainer and with a coach who's he, he's working with me like day in day out, trying to get me the basics of just basically the basic techniques, and then trying to build from the basic techniques and the basic techniques for me, are tough, so, mm. yeah. Did I see you on so the ice with Torval and Dean? Was that part of the yeah. thing? How, what was that yeah. experience like? Yeah, that was quite funny. Well, that's when I fell on my backside. Well, I fell on my, I fell on my back. I, I, had a, I genuinely had a heavy fall. I thought I brought my rib. I was in bits. And it was a surreal experience because I'm on the ice and I've got Michael Barrymore and Trisha Goddard helping me, <laughs> helping me up off the floor. And then as I'm being sat down on the side, I'm being comforted by Torval and Dean. So that was a surreal <laughs> experience, let me tell you that. Um, I've got, I've what a got sentence. the two of them with their arm around trying to help me out. You know, it's, 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 no, what, what can you say? Jesus, there's names being dropped everywhere. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Amazing. You should see the WhatsApp group. That's how he's got you. back pain. Oh, is there, is there a WhatsApp group? Yeah. There's a WhatsApp group. Yeah. Oof, yeah. I want to look at that. Who's the most active member of the WhatsApp group? Uh, no, we're not talking. I'm, I, I can't discuss that, Dan. I'm not going to discuss that with you, but it, it's, it's very active. That's what I would is say. Is H from Steps in your phone now as H or do you have a full name or is he just in his H? Uh, <laughs> no, he's not in. He, he is in uh, as H, yeah, not Ian, yeah. That's good. Yeah. And do you have yeah, me? Question. I, I, I'm like, is it just like Barry Moore when the phone rings? Is that how you have me? <laughs> <laughs> no, Joe, he's not rang me yet, so no, he might never ring me. Let's be honest. In the photo I saw of you with Torval and Dean, you put it up on your Instagram, and you were like, so I can imagine, you know, like the how tentative you would be when you're out in the ice, and it's very hard. Obviously, you don't want to fall. So you were kind of, if people hadn't seen it, if they're not on Instagram, they were either side of you. And you were kind of like, well, I mean, it was as if you were squatting over a bog. That's kind of the position you were in. You were like squatting over I think a bog, the rigid. Me that, I think, I think the, the camera caught me at a bad angle there, Joe. I think I may have, I may have been losing my feet and I was caught and I've tried to squat myself right. into a position to, to soften the, flo the, 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 uh, the fall if I was going to fall. But no. Joe, no, I, I, I don't know what I don't know how they got that ball to me, but it's a great <laughs> photo nonetheless. <laughs> so, I wanted to ask from that squat position, how quickly you got to a point. <laughs> God, this is great. We've got months of this ahead of us. How quickly you got to a point, uh, genuinely, where you were like, you know, probably a bit of trepidation to been able to even skate reasonably, freely and competently, you know, from one end to the other end. No, I, I can do that anywhere. I can, I can I can skate freely. I've been able to do that. I've, I've been out skating with, the, with with my daughters in the last couple of years. But okay. that's not the, that's not the issue. It's the basic techniques that surround it, where you're trying to skate on one leg and you're trying to get your get, get your push offs and things like this. It's, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's probably it's not even making sense to you now, Joe. But I'm I'm trying to get basic techniques right, and and I'm struggling with them. No, I was just pointing because we've put up the picture of you with Torval and Dean, so that's cool. Oh, cheers, cool. right. It looks like yeah, you've been helped off a plane or something. It sort of has that sort of look. It looks it. like you've sullied yourself and they're helping you 
Because <laughs> I would think <laughs> skating on one leg sounds incredibly tough. Well, the sk- yeah, I, the thing is, when you, you, you're pushing off off one leg, so you, one leg, you're trying to get your balance on one leg with one leg going behind you at a certain angle. So then mm. you then you you bring you, you kick off off one leg, bring them together, kick off. So you go left together, right together, and you're trying to kick off and get your techniques like that. Whereas because of my back and my lower back anyway, when I kick off on my right side, I'm all over the place. So, so as in terms of kick off off, sorry, when I kick off off my left and I'm going onto my right leg. I can't pick me let me left leg up high enough to get it in sync with my right, so it's it's forcing me all over the place at the moment. Yeah, no, I'm sure it's not easy. If that makes sense to you, if that makes sense to you, Joe. Well, even if it doesn't now, I'll see it in due course. Don't worry, it'll yeah. be on TV in front of the guts of ten million people. Have we well, thought about see. musical choices yet? I've been asked about musical choices. Come again, on, then. I, 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 no, there's no need to talk. We, we, we'll discuss that in due course, Joe. Just relax yourself. Don't get ahead of yourself. Oh, there's a long olé. way to go, yeah. There'll be a big reveal on that at some stage, Joe. The, green and, the green and red of mayo. Possibly. Some, I can't, I can't some confirm Alan or song. deny it. What Alan song do we want? It just has to go for the medley from the Alan Partridge... Uh, what was, the, what was the guy from Stefano from Sligo? Oh, yeah. The man behind the wire. That could be. That could oh, be your. Thanks and <laughs> <laughs> If you could get that on BBC One and ITV in the space of six months. Oh, I, mean, I tell you what, now that's the plan. That's the plan. And I, I, I see, Mar- see Mark Murphy. I think some kind of like. green and red sequin oh, outfit as well. Brennan, does it? Yeah. Some kind so of green, again, sorry, some kind no. of green and red sequin outfit as well, I presume. Yeah, I was asked about colours. I was asked about colours as well, Joe. Again, I can't, Joe. Joe, you know, right. I'm not going to spoil it. You know, you have to wait and see. You have to tune wait. in on the fifth of January, and you'll see. If people are wondering about the full contestant list, Dan, we have Caprice, we have Trisha Goddard, who Kev mentioned there, morning talk show Trisha, that, that Trisha Goddard. We have Ben Hanlon who's an ITV2 magician, I'm not too sure, I, don't, I haven't come across him. We have Perry Kiley, who's a dancer with diversity. Oh, he's, he, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. We have Lisa George, who plays Beth in Carnation Street. We have H from Steps, a.k.a. Ian Watkins. We have Michael Barrymore. We have Maura Higgins. We have Libby Clegg, Paralympic gold medalist, first ever blind contestant on the show. Which yeah. is, uh, we, we, good luck to her. And then Joe Swash from EastEnders, who plays Mickey? Who, yeah. have you, who have you hit it off with? Oh, they're all good, yeah. My, uh, Bar- Barry, Barry Moore's uh, mother's from Bell Mullet, so you know, a good male man at heart, go. you know. There That's you go. all, just Barry Moore. <laughs> Barry, no, I've, no, I was, uh, no I've, I've got honestly got on well with him, having a good crack with him in the WhatsApp group, as I'm saying. So, yeah, good, it's, good, good, uh, good. I'm, I'm getting on with it, you know. Well, listen, so when are you back in the ice? When's this back up to scratch? Yeah, I'll be back. Well, it's not, it's not, it's sore, it's still sore, but mm. painkillers and everything, I'll be back on tomorrow morning, yeah. That's all right, good man, good man. So, Everton, yeah. before you go. Yeah, I don't know, if, did you see anything of the weekend, Joe? Did you watch them? No, I haven't seen much. It's kind of crept up with me that they've lost four in a row, and there's even pieces in the yeah. Telegraph now, you know, Marco Silva will continue as Everton manager ahead of must-win West Ham match. I didn't realise it had suddenly uh, come to those terms that were into must-win territory. So they mm. lost four in a row. They've obviously spent a lot of money over the summer. He's in his second of a three-year contract. Yeah. Is it that dire? Is he in that much uh, heat? Yeah, well, without a doubt, he's 14 goals as well in the last six games. You know, they, they, they had two clean sheets in the opening two matches and they've conceded at least two since since that. It's It has been grim. And even, even at the weekend against Burnley and... I, I was talking around the game. I, I was in the BBC studio with John Waltz at the weekend. We were chatting away. John obviously has got a lot of knowledge of how Burnley go about things and what Sean Dyche does. And John was talking about the fact that that Sean Dyche will target Everton's weakness at set pieces. 22 goals Marco Silva's Everton have conceded since the start of last season. Six and eight this season now. And the stat is he's staggering around Silva as well, Joe. I know you're a good stats man yourself, but 45 goals conceded in 88 Premier League matches since he's come into the Premier League in uh, January 2017 and that's not including penalties it's it's every time Everton have a, a corner against them or a wide free kick they look vulnerable it's a setup and if you you watch the goal you can see at the weekend Jeff Hendrick getting the goal it was it, it was just you know very much worked on the training ground how do you beat a zonal mark and I've sat in studio I tried to explain it in the past there you always feel it's either a quick short corner that's moved and, and you, you're getting them out of sync or a near post or a far post corner. There's, there's three options that you would try to hit, definitely. And Burnley hit the far post corner and 
what what Tarkovsky did, he just pushed Everton's defence under the ball, wouldn't let them react to the ball that was played beyond them. And Jeff Henry just had a free run, no one marking him, no one blocking him when he arrived from the edge of the penalty area. And on the face of it, it's actually a brilliantly worked goal, but that's that when Everton go down to 10 men at the weekend, the one thing you need to get right is just sort out your set pieces, don't concede from set pieces and, and stay in the game. And I, th- I thought it was a harsh yellow card, uh, second yellow for Seamus Coleman. And but once he got the red, Everton were always going to be a bit more vulnerable because they probably were the better team up to up to, to Seamus Coleman getting sent off. And then all of a sudden they conceded from another set piece and it's game over for them. They, they didn't ever look like they were going to go and get themselves back into the game. So that stat around Silva is alarming. But in the final third of the pitch, Joe, when you when you when you see in Everton for all the money that they spend, the the player. Oh. You gone? Gone. Sorry about that. That was a sudden, a sudden departure. Well, I almost know what he's going to say. For all the money they've spent, they haven't really been cutting teams open. And the game I did see Everton live was that Friday night game away to Aston Villa when they were beaten 2-0. Yeah. And they were 1-0 down for quite a chunk of that game. And then they were Everton supposedly trying to push for an equaliser. And they really just ran out of ideas. And Villa nicked a goal late on to put a 2-0 sheen on the scoreline. So since then, the four defeats, by the way, like they were beaten by Man City. They played okay against Man City. I actually saw that game. Yeah. Um, and they lost to Bournemouth, was that one of them? Bournemouth 3-1. Yeah. They lost, the, a, a killer one is a 2-0 loss at home to Sheffield United. Then came the City defeat and then Burnley at the weekend. So in and of themselves, like no, nothing disastrous. They haven't taken a 6 or 7-0 hiding. Kev, I presume you were going to say, and it was a point I sort of echoed, I haven't seen the Aston Villa game away that Friday night, that for all the money they've spent, I presume yeah. you were about to say they're not exactly lighting it up at the other end either. No, they're not. Uh, and that, that, that's what makes the set pieces all the more important for them, can, given the record from set pieces, which they can't seem to, to keep seeds at, uh, sides out against, uh, when, sorry, in, uh, from. The, 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 the other end of the pitch has got to be right. And Sigurdsson hasn't been firing now. I believe Sigurdsson would have been left out of the side in the Man City game a couple of weeks ago, but uh, Bernard got, um, had, I think he called in sick on the day of the game. Now, if that was the case, you're leaving a £45 million player out the side Richarlison is another one who's a little bit inconsistent. Another thing that was said to me the other week as well is only six times since the Premier League's been formed that an Everton player has scored 15 or more goals. And you're going back to Kinchelski and, and Cotty being two of those in the early 90s. Right. Other than that, you've got Yakubu and Lukaku three times. So there lies your problem. Everton don't have a player that, that you've seriously fancied to go and get 15, 20 right. goals in a season. Just, uh, Kevin, a slight Everton team... Um, but Phil Neville's son, Harvey's been named an Irish under-19 squad today. This is sort of yeah. uh, taking a lot of people by surprise. Uh, was this something, I don't know, did you anticipate this was coming when you were aware of that connection? No, never. I spoke to Phil um, around Harvey Lodes since he's been progressing. Um, so no, I wasn't expecting it. I don't know if it's through Phil's side of the family or his, mo- or his, his mum's side of the family. family. It's the mum's is side of yet? the family, yeah. His uh, maternal right. grandmother. Mm. Yeah, no, didn't, I, I didn't know anything about that. Phil had never mentioned it to me. Do you want me to elaborate on that? Well, I, I mean, do <laughs> what, what, what do you want me to say? I don't, I don't know. Fair play to him. I don't know. I don't know. You're sort of slightly on the fence about it a bit. Well, ah, you know what? It's not. It's not just because it's Phil or anybody else. No. But, you know how I feel about it. I, I, I personally, I, I, you know, I, I think that if if he's progressing and does well as he gets older and he's he's in contention for a senior spot. I don't know. I, I I don't agree with getting lads in at, at, at that young age to get them in with a view to. I'm sure it's been mentioned to him. Look, if you pr- play well for us, there is still a chance you can go and play f- for the country that you want to go and play for. I don't believe that's the right way to go about it. I don't think it's the right policy. I don't. Mm. Yeah. Now there is. There's quite a number of members of the squad. It must be said. A couple of. There's a guy at Spurs. There's a couple in a similar boat. Jamie Bowden, who's around the first team at Spurs, has been called into the Ireland squad as well. I mean, this is the, it's a friendly match this week, you see. So this is now the culture that at international friendlies, lads can be dropped into the squad, really, and there's no, it's a free hit for everyone concerned. You know, it's it doesn't a, prohibit them from going. No, this, is a friendly, this, this is two friendly games. So um, England are doing it as well. Everyone's doing it. Like that these squads, yeah. uh, at these, particularly the under 17, under 19 level, these friendly windows, there's, this is, it's just, it, it's now commonplace. So it's common practice. Come in and see how you like it kind of thing. Pretty much, yeah. Come and have a look. Shop around, basically. Yeah. Have a look at us, yeah. Yeah. It is. Okay. Well, no, it's not yeah. great. We're out of time. Kev, thanks so much. Joe, Best of luck Joe, tomorrow. Yeah, Joe, go on, I, go on. Can I, can I, I, just, yes. I, just to, I just wanted to say well done on your nomination for the Imro last weekend. Uh, <laughs> thanks, sports broadcaster Kev. of the year. Cheers, Really Kev. proud of you. Got another nomination, Joel. Well done, mate. Great stuff. <laughs> Cheers, Kev. Listen, thanks so much. I really appreciate <laughs> it. No, no, I'm proud of you. Proud of you. I'm proud, I'm, proud, I'm, proud, I'm proud of you too. <laughs> good man, good man. <laughs> Back out of the break. 
Off the ball on News Talk. Hello. I think I may have a sore throat. Throat feeling a little sore? It's time to say hello to our new sore throat service at Lloyd's Pharmacy. All of our pharmacies now offer a quick and easy screen to determine whether you have a sore throat caused by strep A. Lloyd's Pharmacy. Say hello to the people that know. Quality, performance and reliability. Volkswagen commercial vehicles are vans that deliver. And until December 31st, they have offers to match. Upgrade bonuses of up to €4,000 across the range. From 0% HP Finance. Leasing options from €56 per week with no deposit and maintenance included. It's time to grow your business with a new Volkswagen van. Take a 24-hour test drive at your local Volkswagen commercial vehicles dealer or visit volkswagenvans.ie and we'll come to you. T's and C's apply. Offer for business customers only. Finance is offered by Volkswagen Bank GmbH Branch Ireland. Authorised by the Federal Financial Supervisory Authority in Germany and regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland for conduct of business rules. Stow your luggage in the overhead. Stretch out and get comfortable. Turn on your laptop. Get connected to free Wi-Fi. Use your phone or switch off, recharge, catch up on me time, have a chat, grab a drink, order a meal, walk around, breathe, live. Welcome aboard this enterprise service to Belfast. Life takes the train, so tick enterprise. Book now on irishrail.ie. As Brexit gets closer, selling to the UK may become more challenging, so it's vital that Irish companies look towards new markets. Enterprise Ireland is here to help you take that step. Our comprehensive supports range from market entry advice and research to funding and access to expert advisors in over 30 international offices. Take the step into new markets. Visit globalambition.ie to find out more. Enterprise Ireland. If you have the ambition, we'll help you take it global. An initiative of the Government of Ireland. The Health and Safety Authority and Irish National Accreditation Board are getting Brexit ready. Do you place products such as machinery on the Irish or EU market using a UK-based notified body for conformity checks? If so, then you need to change to an EU-based notified body. To see how your company can make the transition, visit hsa.ie forward slash Brexit. The Health and Safety Authority and Irish National Accreditation Board. Getting Irish enterprises Brexit ready. This is an initiative of the Government of Ireland. You know what they say, good things come to those who wait. But three to five working days, lads, that's pushing it now. If I'm down in Arklo or Mullingar trying to order a new washing machine, I want it from someone with the largest next day delivery and installation area in Ireland. And that's appliancesdelivered.ie. Whether you want a dishwasher in Dublin, a new oven in Nace, or a tumble dryer in Tullamore, Appliances Delivered has you covered. Plus, we're the highest rated electrical retailer in Ireland, with a juicy 9.7 on Trust Pilot as voted for a buy yourselves. Get next day delivery and installation now at appliancesdelivered.ie. Off the ball. This is News Talk. All right, welcome back. So, we're pretty much done for the evening time. Any final thoughts on anything going on in the world? We are, no, no, it's, like the Everton chat is obviously interesting, like you are in your international window, you wonder, is anyone going to get the, the chop during it? You know, Silva would be up the top of the list. See Sunderland got rid of their manager today, yeah. different story than in League One, obviously, but um, you, know, you kind of wonder, yeah, where yeah. we're acting around. It's around uh, this time where it starts. Guess, the, the jury's out in Silva a little bit. It is, so yeah, well. yeah, no, like, you, that's such a great reputation, even yeah. at Watford and Hull, and, um, but I mean, the set pieces thing. You go back to last year. They went out of a cup game to Millwall. I think it was. Yeah. They were so they were so vulnerable in set pieces, and, and they really just haven't addressed that issue. We rabbited on there a bit, so we're kind of tight for time now. October fifteenth, by the way, we're in the Board Gosh Energy Theatre. Michael Lina, Brian O'Driscoll, Keith Wood, Paul Howard, Malcolm O'Kelly, Danny O'Reilly from the Cronas, and former South African captain Bobby Skin Bobby Skinstad rather. Offtheball.com forward slash events is the place to go for tickets. All in association with Heineken, official worldwide partner to Rugby World Cup Japan twenty nineteen. Visit Drink Away. Dot IE. Uh, we're back tomorrow, usual time, 7 o'clock. Nathan Murphy in the hot seat, Wednesday night rugby, and more. And then OTB AM tomorrow. Offtheball.com is where you can listen to that or get the Go Loud app. Brezzy is going to be co hosting with Jer. That's live from half past seven. Tom Dunn on the way next. Good luck.